This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on June the 1st, 2015. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Windows 10 is finally here. On June the 1st, 2015, you're getting a notification on your computer that uh, the download for Windows 10 will be available on July the 29th. In this episode of Computer Club Lesson, we're going to look at everything you need to know about getting ready to install Windows 10. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as of this morning, um, June the 1st, 2015, uh, Microsoft has started to put out, push out the reservation system for the upgrade to Windows 10. Uh, on your computer this morning, if you opened it up, you should have seen a little Windows icon down here in the lower right with, um, um, with all of your um, other uh, hardware stuff here. Um, not so much the tasks, but in the lower right, you would see the new Windows logo. It's a white logo uh, with, uh, the, um, with the Windows 10 logo. It uh, looks like that. All right. Um, now, the site that I'm on right now is from uh, one of my favorite tech analysts and bloggers, uh, Paul Thurot. And he's given a list of all of the items that, or all of the operating systems that Windows 10 will upgrade. And for starters, Windows 7 Starter will be upgraded to Windows 10. Now, Windows 7 Starter is mostly on netbooks, the little tiny ones, okay, the, the one you went to the store and paid $179 for, the one that ruined the laptop industry for good, uh, but that's Windows Starter in most cases. So that will be upgraded to 10. Windows 7 Home Basic, which is what most of you probably have if you have Windows 7, um, or Windows Home Premium. Yeah, um, Home Premium does a little bit more uh, in the way of operating system management, but uh, Home Basic and Home Premium are what most consumer grades have. Windows Professional will be upgraded to Windows 10. Uh, upgraded to Windows 10 Pro. So you're not going to lose anything in the way of the, the professional operating system. The other two will be upgraded to Home. Um, Windows 7 Ultimate will be upgraded to Windows 10 Pro. So it's going to throttle back. Um, Windows 8.1 will be upgraded to Windows 10 Home. And Windows 8.1 with Bing, why anybody would want Bing, I have no idea, but it will also be upgraded to Windows Home. And Windows 8.1 Pro will be, <coughs> excuse me, upgraded to Pro. Uh, Windows Phone, uh, if you have a Windows Phone, uh, that upgrade will come along later, but it will probably be the same thing. An icon will appear. Um, excluded additions. Um, for any of you that may or may not have a hacked version of Windows 7 um, and someone put on Enterprise version for you, there are a couple of them in the village. I've seen them. Uh, they will not get the Windows 10 upgrade. The enterprise version is for uh, enterprise business, like a big 10,000 seat business. And the way they work uh, the, the uh, OEM number on Windows Enterprise um, is not the same uh, as all of these other um, iterations of Windows. Uh, Windows 10 Enterprise uh, is um, activated 
with a volume license key. In other words, all of the computers in the enterprise have the same number, have the same OEM number. And um, uh, Microsoft, the Microsoft talks back and forth to the enterprise to make sure every number is the same in the, uh, in the enterprise. And so that, that's how they allow them to remain active. Um, um, and Windows 8.1 uh, Enterprise will not be upgraded. Neither will Windows RT on the tablet. Okay, Windows RT tablet will not be upgraded. However, uh, the Windows Surface tablet will be upgraded. So if you have Windows Surface, uh, it will take the upgrade. If you have the old Windows RT tablet, uh, the first iteration of that tablet, it won't be upgraded because it, it, it's a different Windows operating system. It's completely different. It is, they call it Windows, but it's not. It's not Windows. So there you go. There, those, are the, those are the upgrade, uh, the, um, the operating systems that will be upgraded. You'll notice that Windows XP was not included, and now there was Windows Vista. Um, I had heard earlier in the year that perhaps Vista would be upgraded, but it looks like it's not going to be. So there you go with that. Now, um, this next panel is going to show you um, how the Windows upgrade is going to happen. The first thing you have to do when you see that icon on the lower right of your computer, if you click on it, you will, uh, it will open a new panel in which you are able to reserve your copy of, um, reserve a download after July the 29th for Windows 10. And that download will happen automatically in the background with any updates that come in probably after the second Tuesday of the month in August. But they may push it out right away. It's hard to say. I don't know. But uh, at the very least, it will come in on Patch Tuesday, the second Tuesday of every month. If you miss the first time around, that's probably when it's going to happen. Um, here's what the prompt looks like when you open it. Um, you're presented with this page, and you'll see there's, there's some dots going along here. Uh, the page changes to tell you exactly what you're going to get. Uh, but notice this button right here, reserve your free upgrade. That appears on every page that you see through there, and that's exactly what you're going to do uh, after you go through all of this cruft of, of what you're going to get with uh, Windows 10. Um, and it comes to the point where uh, you click on reserve your free, uh, your free upgrade, and... and um, you click on that, and this you'll get this uh, this window come up, and uh, you click on it again, and this will tell you that your upgrade uh, is reserved. In other words, your computer has told Microsoft, "I'm ready for the upgrade when it comes," and so you put in your email address, and Windows will probably notify you through email um, that your upgrade. Um, is is ready for download or has been downloaded. I'm not sure which is going to happen, but it will. Uh, that's why they need your your email address, and um, you just send with that. You send a confirmation that you you understand that your download is going to be reserved for you. Now, what day it comes, um, I don't know. It's obviously not going to be um, on that same day unless you, for some strange reason, got to the front of the queue. It could happen. And uh, the last thing you see once you've sent the confirmation button is uh, you're all done for now. Just sit around and wait. Is this worldwide? This is worldwide. Question? Yes. Does it matter which email address if you've got more than one? No, it's... Um, no, no, any email address will do. Yeah, uh, where you want your important personal email to go, that's where you, that's where you should put, um, that's where you should make that. What happens if you don't do it the first 
at the first, like it's when you get the chance. Yeah, it, it, uh, it will keep on prompting you oh, okay. uh, down here um, to, to eventually do it. Now, there's, there's no problem with doing it right away as soon as you find this icon on your taskbar to go ahead and do this. Um, it's not going to do anything for another month. Two months. This is June the 1st. We're talking the end of July. Yes. So it's two months. Um, now there are um, out there, I have found out, uh, beta testers that are getting what this, this release called uh, Release to Manufacturing RTM. Um, and the beta testers have the latest Release to Manufacturing, which is what you're going to get. And those folks are the ones that have volunteered to be early adopters and to see where the problems are. And um, Microsoft will be fixing those problems over the next couple of months with the uh, beta testers um, looking at all of the functions of the software and seeing what's crashing, what doesn't work, what do you have to do next, what should be better. And so those folks over the next two months will be um, sending Microsoft updates of what's happening. And so by the time two months from now when you get, start to get the, the upgrade, um, it, it should be a full-on experience. Um, as I've said in the past, I don't really want you folks to be early adopters until I'm absolutely sure that your hardware is going to work. Who knows what can happen? Because there are th literally thousands and thousands and thousands of different configurations of hardware and millions of configurations of software that perhaps Windows 10 might choke on as it's loading. It's hard to say. But the beta testers will get pretty much a handle on it. Then after that, when it's in wide release, um, then the problems will turn up. I don't want them turning up for you. Um, by the way, I'm going to take my production machine and as soon as it's ready in my office, I will do the Windows 10 um, upgrade. Uh, I got it this morning, so I'm going to, I'm going to be the first to upgrade uh, as soon as it comes along and I want to see how it's going to work with all of my craziness on my machine because I have craziness. That's what I do. I, I have to have the craziness to be able to help you folks. Now, Windows 10 will have some, um, some new stuff, some new capabilities, but it's going to um, make some old capabilities that you might like go away. And one of the ones that you're probably using um, is Windows Media Player. That's going away. <laughs> now, let's understand what Windows Media Player is doing. If you're playing a DVD and that's all you have um, to play that DVD, Windows Media Player, it will not play in Windows 10 because Media Player is no longer there. The drivers for your DVD player are gone. They're not going to be there. Um, and so in that instance, uh, there are really great alternatives, alternatives I have liked, uh, alternatives to Windows Media Player I've liked for 10 years. VLC is the one that you want to download and install. I did. Yeah. Windows Windows Media Player. Uh, well, you're you're using um, uh, Apple software. You're using. Yeah, it goes through iTunes. It's, yeah. It says, "Do you want to download to iTunes as well?" And I always click yes. Yeah. Because I pay for iTunes, and then it goes to Windows Media Player. Okay, Windows Media Player will stop working. Now, if That's if a yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. Uh, VLC also has a burn program with it, um, but um, what's going to happen there is Windows Media Player will stop working 
in, and um, probably iTunes will become the default player. So your, your music will play through iTunes. Yeah, Not a problem. It does. Yeah. If you download and install the VLC player, it will then become the default player. So if, if you launch music from your iTunes library, it will play in VLC. Okay. Yes? Does that have to do it to understand what's, what's the safe site to get VLC? VLC.org. Yeah, that's, yeah. I've never opened it. Yeah. I thought, well, that's a music player. I've got one. So yeah. you, you don't go anywhere else for VLC player, but VLC. Dot org, or you can go to majorgeeks.com and download it from there. But uh, if you're if you're going to get it from any, I recommend you get the source code from the source. Okay, which is vlc.org. So I shall have to start because I've only been using iTunes since last November. So less than half of my music is in iTunes. So. The, the other the other music is is uh, is still playing in media player, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, what will happen is is you'll click on it and it won't play, or it will default to iTunes. If it does not default to iTunes and will not play, then start using VLC. Okay. Okay. No, you're not going to lose anything. You're not going to lose where will, anything. Where will it go then if I can't purchase the, the, the purchase? Now, if, if your music is in the iTunes library. Yeah, most, about half is. Yeah, uh, nothing will happen to that. Nothing it, will happen to that. No. Yeah, if you have other music in your music folder. Yeah, but that's in the Windows Media Player folder. Um, no, it, it is in actual fact in, yeah, in the music okay. library. Nothing will happen to that. It's just that uh, if it played in media player before, it will stop playing in media player. It may default to iTunes. And iTunes may become the default player. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, or if it doesn't play at all, if it wants a default player, VLC is the one to, to download and install. Okay, so you're gonna, that's what you're going to lose there. Um, Um, let me just see here for a second. I think I'm. Did you say VLC has its own burn program as well? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, later on, uh, when I know more, um, I'm going to make some recommendations about a burning program that will that you may want to uh, install on your new machine. Um, the reason that I say that is that it will be good if everyone has a backup copy of Windows 10. Because if you ever need to reinstall Windows, you'll reinstall it fresh from this backup copy. The other thing that you must do, I recommend this as a must do, when you get your emails from Microsoft, um, that have confirmed that you're downloading and installing Windows 10, it will give you a, um, a license number, a 25-digit number. Write it down, put it in a safe place, because if you ever have to reinstall Windows, that is the only number that is going to work. You will be able to reinstall Windows um, as a fresh clean install, but that is the only number that will work. How many gigs is it going to take to back up the whole thing of Windows 10? Uh, it's, a, it's a three gig download, so it will fit on a DVD. Oh, okay. Or it will fit on a USB stick, yeah. but you're better off to use a DVD yeah. because um, it, in, in all probability, uh, if you've put that D DVD away in a safe place, nothing will happen to it. If you put it on a USB stick, mm, as soon as you plug that stick in, it can disappear. So I have it on a DVD. But 
more than anything else, if you're going to do this, please, 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 when Microsoft gives you your new license number, write it down clearly in big letters and put it someplace safe. Because if you don't do that and you have to reinstall and you don't have that number, you have to buy it. We will go through that um, when we go when we uh, reconvene this fall. Um, I'm going to when I have all of the resources ready and lined up. I will show you how to make um, um, a copy of this download that will be able to work on um, to reinstall Windows 10. You may be able to get a copy of Windows 10 uh, that, well, you will be able to, I'm sure, uh, from download sites. Um, particularly Microsoft, um, you might be able to get um, a download uh, of, of an ISO and then you can burn it to disk, but that requires some software to do it. Um, that I will go through all of that come this fall. Um, so, but the most, uh, I cannot stress it enough, when Microsoft gives you that license number, write it down. Don't just save it on the computer or in an email. Write it down and put it somewhere safe. Where will it be when they give you that? It'll be in an email. Oh, okay. They send emails like that, you know, from them, from Microsoft <laughs> to your little self. And print your things. email and... Yeah, you can print your email. Um, I, I would, uh, if you're going to do that, and, and you're, if you're an organized person, okay, yeah, make, make a cup, print your email and make a copy of it. If you're an unorganized person, write it down and put it in three or four places. <laughs> yeah. If I print it off the email, I know I got it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, you can do that, or make sure that you write it in big, clear letters. Uh, there are, you know, it's uh, a Microsoft license number, I believe is 24 or 25 letters and, and numbers. Okay. Yeah. So you got to be careful of what, yeah. what you're doing. That's why they say print. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, and without that number, if you have to re-download and install Windows 10, which you will be able to do from Microsoft, you will have to buy it. This is for all the people, this is the free upgrade for all the people that have Windows 7 and Windows 8.1. Um, beyond that, you will have to buy it. Now, if you're buying a new computer after uh, July, uh, in, in August, um, then it will probably still come with Windows 8.1. Um, and it will probably be that way until the new computers hit the shelves another month after that. Um, and by Christmas time, everything out there should be Windows 10 in time for the Christmas buying season. Okay, um, that's the Windows update news or upgrade news. So anything that I have on Windows 7 will automatically transfer over and run on Yes, yeah. Um, now, as far as programs goes, this is where the real rub comes always when we do these upgrade, uh, these upgrade systems. Um, if you have an old version of a Windows 98 program that you got to run in, um, and you can do it in Windows, in, uh, Windows 7 Home Premium, you can get sometimes uh, a Windows 98 program to run. Um, in all probability, it will not run <laughs> in Windows 10. Um, a, a game or, or um, um, a hobby and craft program or something like that, that you got it to run in Windows XP and, and Windows Vista, Windows Vista to seven, yes. There are ways of doing it, but in Windows 10, Probably not. Um, so you may lose some of your old, old programs. But that's life. Move on. <laughs> Move on. Now, 
um, supported hardware. I um, saw a quick blurb this morning when I was looking around at all of this stuff on what hardware will be supported. And joy of joys, um, Windows 10 is a lot lighter operating system than Windows 7. And it is light years lighter than Windows Vista. Um, as the number of lines of code and the resources it needs to run on a computer. Uh, Windows 7 runs great uh, with two gigs of RAM, um, a, a fast processor, uh, um, 2.8 gigs and higher, or 2.8 kilohertz and higher. Um, so it runs on old hardware pretty good. Um, but Windows 10 will run better on old hardware than Windows 7 did. So you may f see a performance improvement if you have old hardware like your laptop. Uh, you may see a performance improvement um, because the Windows 10 operating system is a much lighter operating system. It doesn't require as many resources. It will run on one gig of RAM. It will run. So um, that's a good thing about it. Now over time, over time, uh, that may very well change because um, um, for those of you that still have an XP box, uh, if you bought that XP box new and it had um, Windows XP Service Pack 1 or Service Pack 2 and it ran fine on uh, 512 uh, of memory, it, yeah, yeah, uh, it, or 756 uh, of memory, and it ran fine. Uh, and then all of a sudden, um, Windows XP Service Pack 3 came along, and your computer went, oh! It was painful to watch it try and run it on 756 of memory. Uh, that is because the operating system essentially doubled in size. Over time, I can almost guarantee you that uh, Windows 10 will double in size, um, maybe over uh, four or five years of upgrades, and, or not upgrades, but updates. And there may very well be uh, an upgrade cycle three or four or five years from now to uh, take care of um, uh, issues with the operating system, they're, they're, they're going to find new zero-day vulnerabilities in it, so those will have to be patched at the operating system level, and so the operating system will grow in size. If you're running it on one gig of RAM, you may need two uh, to make it work properly. But these are all for down the road. Um, if you have um, a modern computer that you've bought in the last couple of years, or even today, <laughs> uh, good for you. Um, I think that you are pretty much future proof. Uh, if you, if the uh, computer, uh, w the computer will keep on running Windows 10 quite nicely for the next 10 years. Um, provided that you do not break the hardware provided you don't break the hardware. Um, so there you go, that's uh, Windows 10 for now. That's the best information that I have. Um, question. Yes, question. They mentioned something about security is going to be better? Yes, it will be. Um, now, uh, that's one other thing that I'm going to have to investigate further is if you have um, Norton or Kaspersky or something like that um, as, your, uh, as your security client, um, Windows 10 will probably just take it over and run it. Okay? Um, I just have a vast, so. Yeah, well, a yeah. No, well, um, what I would suggest then uh, is to, is to uh, uninstall a vast. Be just before you do the upgrade. And then uh, when you do the upgrade, you will get Windows Defender 
as your security client. All right, and it will run, it will work fine. And um, that's probably the preferred way to do it. I'm gonna have to check into it a little more, uh, but that's probably the way to do it. Um, Windows Defender is gonna become the, uh, the de facto standard for, um, for Windows um, for the next 10 years, as far as um, antivirus security goes. It, it does it all by itself, unless something gets into the computer and turns it off. Oh. <laughs> then what? Oh. Well, then you have to uh, take care of all of those problems of, of getting r rid of all the spyware, malware, and scumware. I was asking because uh, my have asked what it's doing now. It's saying you got uh, five things that we can get rid of. Blah, 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 blah. They want 1999. Well, yeah, they're... they're <laughs> They're, they're trying to... I mean, I'll fix you. I'll run Windows. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing that you can do, um, if you don't want to do that stuff, is you can, uh, you can download and install and run malware bytes. And, yeah. If you run it and install it, then uh, it should take care of the problem that Avast says it found, but it wants money for it. Okay, well then it so should take care of the problem. Yeah, so like, I think just the vast wants to whine for money. Yeah, they're, they're just whining for money. They're, you're correct in that. I've got a malware bytes doing everyone. that though. It fills the screen when I turn the computer yeah. on and it says my free something yeah, on you're, you're, well, you're, uh, download now. But again, it wants money. Well, I have the free one and I ain't paying them. <laughs> yeah, um, you can turn that off. Let me have a quick look here. Um, uh, I'm not sure whether I put malware bytes on this computer. I didn't. When it opens up, yeah. you look. It has. It shows you four entries in a line. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, the bottom entry. Mm -hmm. If you look over on the right side of that entry, you will see free trial. Yes. Okay. It will say uh, you're able to disable that free trial and it will stop asking you for money. Oh, okay. Now, it will, uh, right now, because the free trial has ended, it's not doing anything uh, to protect you in real time. If you buy the service at 30 bucks mm. a year, it will protect you in real time. In other words, it will run when Windows starts and it will look at the websites that are coming at you and it, it will divine whether there's any nasties in there and uh, stop them from coming down. Um, but Windows Defender does a pretty good job of that. Um, and so, yeah, you can turn off the, the free trial. It will stop bugging you for money and they just run it once a week. Yeah, I was going to say, I do it. so the free one stays there then if I turn yes, it off. Yes, exactly so. And it, and it updates. Uh, it takes its updates, no problem. When you open it up, it, it updates. It will keep doing that. Yeah, okay. Can I transfer, sorry, question. Yes. Can I transfer my, mal my malware bytes from my, ex my com desktop computer to my laptop? Um, no, I don't think so. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> but here again, uh, you can download and install malware bytes, uh, the free version. And I'm it, in yeah. Real time, but I don't pay for it. How did you manage that? Yeah, because mine, mine wouldn't give me the, the real time one. Oh, mine does. It was in yeah. the taskbar, and yeah. every time it comes in, yeah. and then um, about a second or two afterwards, I get a flag on the little icon, and it says fix now. And then it, because all it did when it came in, uh, was loaded. Yep. And I click fix fix now, and it's in real time. Yeah, I am not. I'm not sure why you're getting away with that. Maybe you were locked in as an early adopter of malware bytes. Um, oh, I've had it since we bought it. Yeah. yeah. May, uh, maybe so. Your your grandfathered in uh, as far as per uh, because uh, uh, it, years ago it was a one time purchase. Uh, yeah. And so it may it may very well be now your malware bytes is thirty bucks a year, 
But if you're grandfathered in, I don't know how you would be able to transfer that grandfathered um, program over to a new computer. I don't think you can. So then it would be pay payable from now on by year? Yeah, if you want the pro version. And like I said, with the combination of, of uh, Windows Defender and Malwarebytes, um, the free version, just run it once a week, I cannot see where you're going to get into real problems. Right. I have Defender on my laptop. Yeah. That came with it. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, regarding antivirus, if you're buying a new computer, is it is it Norton that's in there? Like I have. It's Norton or McAfee or something. Or something like if that. It, on your brand new computer, if you go into Programs and Features and you unload whatever came with the yes. computer because it's it's uh, you haven't purchased it yet it's still a trial version for 30 days or 60 days or whatever just uninstall it and windows defender will start to work oh so windows yeah. defender is eight, with, with 81 i'll yeah. have that with 81 yes yeah. oh excellent yeah okay. yeah excellent yeah okay that's right but it it probably also came with uh with uh, mcafee or yeah. Norton or something like that. Yeah. You have to go in and uninstall it. Oh, I know that. When I yeah. changed, I yeah. always uninstall the one first. Yeah. So good. Okay. And then Windows Defender kicks in. That's yeah. And so um, when you open your control panel on your new machine, yes. it's going to look like this. Yeah. Okay. Yes. To get to where you want to be, you'll click on Category up in the right top right corner. You click on that and you'll get a drop down box that says large icons or small icons. If you have weak eyes, take large. <laughs> if not, you can click on small icons and then they pretty much fill the page. Okay. And uh, from there, you can go to uh, programs and features. Where do I find it here? Programs and features right here in the list. You click on that. And it will um, show you all your programs and features, just like add remove programs. And you can uninstall um, these versions. Uh, when you've got a brand new computer, um, there is, I think I've mentioned this before, the reason that you got it so cheaply, instead of paying $900 for it, you got it for six, was that um, the, the computer manufacturer was approached to buy uh, semantic or it was approached by Kaspersky or, or somebody and said if you put on um, as, as a trial version our software we will give you money. We'll give you a piece of the action and that lowers the cost of the hardware that you're buying because the manufacturer of the hardware uh, is getting money from somebody else too. Um, in a lot of cases, uh, game companies like Wild Tangent, which I hate, have done that. They have approached the manufacturer and said, let us put our games on your, uh, on, on your machine and we'll give you money. Because these games are not free um, to a large degree. They are in-application purchases uh, if you want to play the games further. Or there's advertising in the games. And that's why the um, that's where the money comes from. Your eyeballs are the money. Is, is all these question? Is all these things that you get the same as the very first computer I bought in '98? That was it, a blank screen, and then the kid behind the counter says, "Now you need this and this," and I'm just, uh, like that till he sold me nearly $2,000 worth of computer. Yeah. Um, no. <clears throat> Today's uh, modern computer, when you purchase it, um, like I said, it, it may have some of this other cruft from other, from other companies on it. But it is uh, essentially, you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to buy any extra hardware, like a sound card. When you, when you purchase your computer, it probably came without a sound card, so you had to purchase one. Yes, yes. Um, uh, maybe a DVD, uh, uh, a CD player. It didn't come with one, so you had to purchase that. I even had to buy Windows 98 for in it. Exactly. Okay. So um, all of that stuff now comes with uh, modern build computers. 
um, as a uh, as a way to sell them, you know, to sell more of them. The computer industry, um, the hardware companies, and Microsoft itself um, are seeing a sales decline. Okay, Dell, HP, all of them, Acer, are seeing sales declines year over year for the last three years. Uh, they're still making money, but um, it's like show business for them. Um, every year, every month, they lose more and more and more customers very, very slowly. And at some point or other, it becomes untenable. It becomes not a viable business anymore. So they have to do things to entice you in. Okay? It's really, it's show business, folks. Show us what you got. What's the latest and greatest um, stuff, toys. bells and whistles, toys, uh, that you can do. That's where webcams came from. Okay? There was another piece of included hardware. Uh, you, you're, you could buy a separate webcam for your computer, paid about 90 bucks for a good one, uh, and it worked fantastic. Uh, but they started to include it in the computer. Now, you paid about $30 more for the computer to have that webcam in it, but that was there at their cost. If they could sell you a webcam on the side at $90, there's $60 profit. Okay, but not anymore. Hardware is a very difficult business to be in. Let's face it, folks, there is no money in it. Okay? Any other questions? Go ahead. Okay, when I was setting up my Microsoft account, um, one of the things was, okay, I put all my personal stuff in, then now you've got to put your updates in. Because, I mean, it's been sitting in a warehouse. And yeah. I skipped that. Do I get back? How do I get back to make sure I have? Okay. Uh, yes. Um, no, I don't have a Windows 8 computer here, but I will tell you how to do it. The first thing you do, you have to do is open your charms bar. Yes. Okay. Now, we've gone through that before. You, uh, you hold down the Windows key and tap C. Yep. I've already seen it. Yep. yep. That opens up your charms bar. In the search, um, in the search area at the top of the charms bar, yeah. just type in update, and it will show you um, the program for Windows Update. Okay. Click on that, and um, whatever Windows Update will launch, and it will search around your computer to say what do what do you need. It will go to the internet and get all of the updates you need. Um, at this point. Uh, you may need 50 or 60 updates. Yeah, I know. Okay, so it's going to download them. It's going to take an afternoon. It's going to take an afternoon. As well as, as well as, um, did you, when you looked at your computer this morning, did you see the, the Windows uh, I, update? No, I didn't. No. Okay, and you're probably not going to until. until you finish updates. Now, that was another thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, you just reminded me of it. Um, if you don't see that um, that little icon appear in your taskbar for window for the Windows, go and check your Windows updates, folks. Click on Start All Programs and find the Windows Update. And if it looks like that. You are not going to get updates, and you're not going to get this critical update that will allow you to upgrade. Okay? There is an up update for Windows 7, Windows 8, and 8.1 um, that um, tells the computer, I am fully updated and ready to upgrade. If you have turned updates off for whatever reason, or somebody turned them off for you, you're not going to get the upgrade. Okay, so you must go back in and turn on automatic updates. And if it's not been on for three years, you have about 180 updates to do. It's going to take the best part of a day. 
But if you want this free upgrade, you have to do that. You have to turn on automatic updates. Now, in very rare cases, Windows updates was turned off for a reason. And that reason was that at some point or other, uh, an update came down or a series of updates came down to your computer and the computer couldn't, couldn't use them. And so it said, okay, I'm doing your update now, uh, updating, uh, restart the computer, and you, you restarted the computer and the updating process started and then at some point it stopped, it choked, and it said, I can't do this update, I'm reverting back. I'm reverting back to before the update downloaded. And so your computer will start, not a problem, it's just reverted back to before this update. Um, and so the next time you turn off the computer, it will say, oh, I need to update. Same problem. The update will load, it'll shut down, you turn on again, and it reverts back. It's stuck in this loop, okay? And so uh, on older versions uh, of, uh, or uh, on versions of Windows Update that I see have taken a couple of hundred updates. And I know that the computer is going to be up, uh, updated or upgraded soon by the, by the owner. I will just turn off the updates for now and say, okay, it's not going to work and there's nothing I can do about it besides reloading the operating system because there's updates are damaged. Uh, Windows Defender will still update. It comes through, Win for some reason or other, it comes through Windows Update. If updates are turned off, it still updates. I don't, I don't know why. It still does. Um, but that's a good thing. That's, that's what you want to see. Can you get that picture you've got on the screen? Do we, can we get rid of that so the updates come in? And yes. You just click on the button, turn on automatic updates. Oh. It's red because they're turned off. Okay. All right. Um, but you're getting updates. Your computer takes updates when you shut it down, right? Yep. Well, I turned it off one night and it says updating one of 12 mm. and it was still running in the morning when I got up because I went to bed. Did it, did it eventually uh, fix oh. itself or is it still doing it? I turned it off wrong, you know. You okay. Get the screen that says it was turned off wrong, click any. Key. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, it just redid them. Oh. It just redid them. Your computer's still taking updates now, right? Yeah. Okay, it just redid them. That's all. It it uh, it said Brenda's confused. Yes. Um, <laughs> we'd better start over and hope she leaves it alone. All night. All night. It says don't turn your machine off. Yeah, and it means it. Yeah. Um, in in some instances, I have seen uh, the shutdown routine get stuck. Okay. And if it's not doing updates and it's stuck on shutdown mode, sometimes that happens. Yeah, you're okay to force a shutdown by holding down the power button. Yeah, uh, and, but it was right in the middle of something when you did that. It gets so hot though. Yeah. I don't like to leave it running Yeah. Like, yeah. They were all optional. Yeah. I just left them alone. But then an update is small. Well, it and may. Now I've got to yeah. Again. Yeah. It, it may look at these updates, um, uh, these optional updates, um, and, and uh, something has changed uh, for some reason or other. The optional updates become uh, important updates, yeah. not so much uh, critical updates. There are three classifications critical, important, and yeah. optional. Yeah. Uh, important updates you should do. Critical updates are where um, are on Patch Tuesday. Um, Microsoft has been working on zero-day vulnerabilities for your computer, and uh, these are critical. Do them now because uh, you are hackable. Okay. 
More things we should know. Any more things we should know? If you've got something in there that says this is Microsoft Office trial, and you, like I told you, I want to I don't want that. I want to go to Libra office. Yeah. Do I have? Do I just let that trial go? Do I delete that little? Well, you can you can delete the shortcut. Yes. If it's if it's got the the little arrow uh, in the yeah. corner of it, that, you can delete that shortcut. Okay. All right. Um, and that's you know um, it keeps you from clicking on it and yeah. starting a process that just gets on your nerves. So get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that, about whether it will be. Uh, it's not going to be free. No, no, that's that's really that's that. for yeah. sure. It's yeah. not going to be free. So I've got the yeah. Online. So I'm I'm putting yeah. Libra yeah. now. Yeah. LibreOffice is the way to go. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, as to email clients, um, I am not. I don't think that Microsoft will mess with um, Windows Live Mail. I don't think they'll mess with it. I think that it will be left alone. Yeah, I think it will be left alone. I hope it will be left alone. There are enough problems with Windows Live Mail as it is. Um, so is it advisable to back up your mail um, before this happens? Um, what I would do um, with Windows Live Mail, if I've got a, no, I don't have anything in here. Um, no, I don't have, I don't have any accounts, sorry. Um, you can go into your account settings and um, you can back them up. I think I put that out as a video, how to back up your, your email account. That was something about export. That was the export-import. Yeah. Import. Yeah. Yes. Um, I yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to do that. Yeah. At, at the very least, at the very least, you want to try and back up your email account settings. Yes. Because if anything happens, if if it if anything happens to Windows Live Mail, you can uh, uh, re reinstall it, but it will want your account settings. And if you have them in this file backup, um, you just click on it, or you you uh, you open up Windows Live Mail in import account settings, and it should import them back. If you got lucky, it'll bring in your uh, your password with it. Yes. All my email is in different folders, like computer lessons. Yeah. Is that what I'll lose if they muck it up? Um, it could happen. And how would I keep all that? I mean, I have yeah. Christmas, Easter, the kids, the dogs. Yeah. I just don't know yeah. where yeah. else to go. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the reasons why uh, I am uh, not recommending that you do it right away. You wait for me to give you the word. Well, I will. Because okay. if... if it starts to mess up mail. I will know about it. Um, I will. I will get notifications, and I will be keeping an eye on, on all of the blogs and stuff to see, all of the complaints. And if mail is among them, of complaints that can be mail is getting messed up, um, then we will go through before I, before I uh, give you the all clear. We'll go through. Um, the best ways to back up your stuff before you do this. But I can't see a problem with Windows Live Mail, but Live Mail is delicate. Things can happen to it. Um, that's why, uh, at the very least, I like to see people use uh, Webmail, Google, Yahoo, whatever, um, or even Webmail from your internet service provider. Um, but um, having Windows Live Mail as a local client on your computer, it, it can be dicey. It, it can be iffy uh, because, like I said, it can be damaged very, very easily. Do you think I'll be able to continue using just my local with the source, Rogers, whatever? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's what I'm 
that's yeah. what I intend to do. I, I've done with the new computer, using it as my password and everything went into Microsoft, and I use my old email, which is so yeah. yeah. perfect. And, and it's working, right? Yeah, I'd rather do that. Yeah, it's working, right? Yes. So if I lose Windows Live Mail of the message talk, which I'm going to do, is it also Hotmail? Because mine is really Hotmail Outlook. Yeah, uh, you can go into Outlook and, and see all your mail there. So if Windows Live Message If Windows, li Windows Live Mail, uh, let's go through it again, is local to your computer, you're looking at uh, a program on your computer to manipulate yeah, mail. Yeah. If you go to Outlook.com and it is the same email address as um, your Windows Live Mail, you're looking at email on the web. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you go to Outlook.com, all of the folders that you've created in uh, Windows Live Mail, they should be there in Windows.com and Outlook.com. Okay, that's fine. That's uh, that's what it's supposed to do. So if Windows Live Mail does mess up, they're not going to disappear from Outlook. From Outlook. All right. The only the only uh, thing you may not have in Outlook is all of your addresses, your address book. Mm -hmm. there. If they're there, that's fine too. Yeah. If you make if if you make a new address in Windows Live Mail, it suddenly appears in Outlook.com. I never go to Live Mail. Don't even know what's Yeah, there. okay. All right. All right. Outlook.com is where you want to be. That's yes. that's the safest yeah. place. The only thing I find is if I see a picture somewhere on the web and I want it and I send it to my email address, redroad at uh, hotmail.com. It goes to, the picture goes to live mail, then I have to send it from there back to yeah. Outlook. Yeah. That's what I've been mocking about. And it doesn't always work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, uh, yeah. it, we, uh, we'll revisit email next year. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty much it, folks. We've gone through the hour. Um, I will try and get this video off as quickly as I can in the next day or two. Um, so thanks very much. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.